А вы не боитесь? start our uh, sessions. It's my big pleasure to introduce uh, our next speaker, Evgeny Fomenik from Chelyabinsk. He will speak about complexity of three manifolds, exact, exact values and estimates. Thank you. Uh, I will talk about uh, recent results which uh, we obtained with uh, Andrei Vesnin uh, and it's uh, concerned the complexity of three manifolds. Uh, First of all, uh, let me say that the uh, main unsolved problems, the problem in three-dimensional topology is a classification problem. And one uh, of the approaches to the classification is just uh, to define some uh, complexity fu function on the set of all compact oriental manifolds, just uh, assign to each manifold uh, non-negative uh, integer number and uh, classificate uh, the manifolds, so complexity 1, complexity 2, so partial uh, classification of manifolds. Are there are several... Are you sure that compact manifolds form a set? Are you not sure? Ah, it is that there are there are the uh, 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 <laughs> ah, of the the so so. <laughs> <laughs> of the 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 first, uh, let me uh, say that the Higer genus, which uh, is equal to the minimal genus over all Hegel decomposition uh, of uh, manifold. And uh, this uh, complexity function is additive with respect to connection sum. And uh, of course, we know the classification of uh, the manifolds of genus 1 length spaces, uh, but um, we don't know if, uh, even for. Uh, genus 2 Hebert uh, genus specification for this uh, set of manifolds. And uh, uh, we should mention here that uh, for uh, each k there are infinitely many manifolds of complexity k. There are no finite property for such a function. Uh, 
The next well-known candidate for such a function is a triangulation complex TV assigned to, to a pre-manifold the minimal number of tetrahedra needed to uh, obtain this manifold when together the faces of uh, the tetrahedra. And uh, uh, since the complexity of three-dimensional sphere is one, uh, there are no chance to, to have an additivity for such a function, but uh, of course uh, this function uh, ha has a property of have a finiteness property but for any case uh, uh, we need many finitely many manifolds of complexity K. By so triangulation you mean like solid open not not a simplicial complex the single, uh, we, we take uh, K tetrahedra and do the uh, faces together by it's some three three three. Three. Well but then for sphere why why is it one? You need two tetrahedra. Why one? Two? No one. 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 Ah, one, yes. You can, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 but that's not, that's not a regulation in But similar, yeah, okay, yeah. similar to no. okay. the Okay. We, we allow that uh, two uh, complex <coughs> uh, intersects more than one two simple sheet. So the answer on some question is that for uh, if you have a 
considered a class of clothes to reducible three manifolds uh, except the three R3 and L31, then the materials complexity uh, coincides with uh, triangulation complexity. Uh, so uh, it means that uh, material complexity has a finiteness uh, <coughs> property for the class of closed manifolds. For each K, we have only finitely many uh, closed to the reducible manifolds of complexity uh, K. Uh, so uh, we can uh, classify, uh, if we have a complexity, we, we can classify uh, all the manifold complexity 1, 2, and so on. Just uh, uh, gluing together one tetrahedra and then gluing together two tetrahedra and so on. And uh, what we sh should do just uh, recognize what manifold we have and check uh, do they appear in the previous levels. It was done uh, by oh, sorry, uh, by Sergei Matveev at Vladimir Tarkaev uh, by using of computer, no, uh, computer uh, ar arising Uh, there are many authors starting from complexity up to 5. Uh, it was Sabatier, complexity 7, 8, 9, uh, Italian groups of Petronio, uh, uh, Martelli. So uh, now we have a table, uh, let me say just publish a table up to complexity 12. And uh, we know all manifolds which have such a complexity. What did you what do you are using me just to distinguish? Not me. <laughs> what? Well, Matei Makaev used uh, uh, them, uh, mostly homology, first homology group and to write heroic variants. And what did you do? At which user? At which uh, all groups. At which what sorry? At what groups of the new No, no, no. Oh, uh, level. Uh, so uh, this table uh, uh, allows uh, to to uh, analyze uh, special uh, uh, analyze almost simple spines for uh, the manifolds which arise in the, uh, uh, arise in the table. And uh, constructing such spines for infinitely many of manifolds, we can get uh, an upper bound from the complexity. For, for example, uh, uh, Matveev constructed an upper bound for the length spaces, which is a function s p q minus 3, and it's defined as follows that we uh, and uh, can see the vital portion in the expansion of the group, uh, containing fraction just uh, and some of these vital portions. Uh, so, and uh, it was uh, checked that this formula gives uh, an exact value for uh, all the manifolds, which uh, all the length space, which uh, uh, which are in the table. So, after uh, complexity twelve. Uh, this formula gives an exact value of the complexity. How do you know that there are no other manifolds of complexity than the before? Because we construct all of them. Don't need to know. Yeah, we can any any Uh okay, can you if somebody constructs another Somebody. <laughs> You take 12 tetrahedra and up enumerate to all the ways to... Okay, up to level 10, it was checked by uh, Martelli Petroni and uh, two tables of kind of uh, Just uh, another formula was uh, done by Martelli and Petroni. They constructed a uh, nice uh, upper bound for the complexity of uh, many poles. This uh, upper bound depends on... Sorry, this upper bound depends on the uh, parameters of singular fibers, uh, which are normalized, and uh, just uh, on other characteristic of uh, the base surface of these manifolds. And this uh, formula is give uh, an exact 
in exact values for uh, all double weighted manifolds of the complex level. And uh, uh, finishing the uh, case of closed manifold, I should say that there are. Uh, for the case of closed manifold, uh, there are uh, a few families of manifolds for which we know the uh, complexity exactly. It, this was done by Jake Rubinstein and Kilman, and they proved that for some uh, particular uh, families of length spaces, uh, they proved the, uh, complex, they found the complexities just given by this formula. And of course, this kind of set is uh, upper bound given by the upper bounds given by the uh, Now I turn my attention to, to the case of manifolds with uh, boundary. And uh, uh, this example, if you consider an infinite set of manifolds, uh, which is just direct product of uh, closed orientable surface F and uh, uh, an interval, then uh, this, uh, all these manifolds have complexity zero because uh, it's almost simple spine, just uh, uh, just uh, a surface F, and uh, we have uh, no uh, two vertices, uh, and uh, so complexity is zero. But uh, what I want to uh, mention here is that we have an infinitely many manifolds uh, of even complexity. In case of closed manifolds, we have a uh, finite manifolds of the uh, But uh, now I said that we can restrict uh, the manifolds with boundary to the case of uh, hyperbolic manifolds. And in this case, uh, we will have a finiteness property uh, that means that for uh, a given number of cards, there are exactly only finitely many hyperbolic manifolds with boundary uh, having complex decay. Uh, that's that exactly the answer of your question. Uh, uh, Matthias proved that if uh, we consider a compact, compact irreducible hyperbolic manifold with boundary, then the uh, complexity is equal to the minimal number of truncated degradator uh, needed to obtain n bloomingdale faces together. So uh, it means that for uh, this class again we have a finite property that for any given we find the many many models. Truncated means all that we just cut uh, all corners of all corners, right? Vertices. Vertices, right? Forward. Forward is definitely. No. no. If you cut only the vertices, you won't obtain a meaningful <laughs> boundary. But then an open. You must cut a little bit an open tetrahedron small. <laughs> you just cut vertices and blue and by By the hexagons that we need. Yes, by the hexagon rights. Blue the faces. And that triangle is formed by a bond. Mm -hmm. uh, now let me say that uh, if you consider a uh, truncated tetrahedra, and uh, there is a butterfly inside, as I described it before, and uh, Exactly uh, when we glue uh, this uh, tetrahedra all together, uh, all the butterflies glue to uh, very nice, almost simple spine, which is usually called special spines. Uh, let me say that these spines, special spines, has a very nice structure. Uh, it's uh, there are only three types of uh, vertices. Uh, there are only three types of points in these spines. So, uh, on singular points, uh, which has a neighborhood just a disk, uh, the point we call triple, tri triple line, uh, the neighborhood is pictured here, and the true vertice, uh, which is, was uh, uh, 
introduced as a measure of complexity. So uh, the which link is just a uh, uh, graph gamma four. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, if we uh, consider a singular set, this set, uh, the points of type two or three, form a four-valent graph. And if we delete from the spine, spine four-valent this uh, singular set, we will get just a set of disks. So we can consider such a dual spine, which is dual to a uh, truncated triangulation as a uh, cell complex which for, uh, arising as a uh, following graphs and uh, we blew the some disk so that's the main idea here, here. so uh, the question is uh, what can we uh, construct uh, infinitely many manifolds with uh, known uh, value of complexity uh, it was done for the, uh, in the uh, case of manifold is boundary by Rigerio, Martini, and Petronio. They consider, uh, of, uh, they consider the class of manifolds uh, which has a, uh, dual spines with uh, uh, just uh, one uh, disk. So they have such, such a spine. We have a graph includes uh, just one disk. So, uh, or in, we can say this in other words that we have a uh, truncated triangulation with exactly one edge, which is a dual language. So, uh, then they proved that for such manifolds, uh, the complexity is equals to the number of vertices in such a spine. And uh, this is very uh, easy to prove that the complexity is n because uh, for manifolds, uh, hydrovoid manifolds of boundary uh, manifolds of boundary that we know that the number of disks uh, the number of disks in the special spine minus the number of vertices uh, is equal to the uh, Euler characteristic of the manifold so uh, if we have a minimal special spine uh, minimal in the sense of vertices uh, it should be minimal in the sense of uh, disks uh, in this spine, but uh, this uh, manifolds has a spine with only one disk, so it should be minimal uh, by definition. But uh, what problem they solved is that they proved uh, that uh, for each n this uh, class contains at least one manifold, but, uh, more than one, but let me say just one. So it's not, uh, that this set is not empty. They construct for each n uh, a manifold uh, in this class. And uh, uh, we continue this idea in the following direction. If you uh, have consider hyperbolic manifolds, manifolds which have a special spines with two disks. And uh, let, uh, maybe we can uh, prove, uh, we can. Uh, find their complexity too, and we did. Uh, we were successful with this idea. We can uh, consider a so-called generalized polyhedral and Zimmerman manifolds, uh, if we, uh, which constructed as follows: we uh, consider a bipyramid uh, with uh, n is a uh, uh, n dome in its space, and k is just a uh, number which uh, uh, just uh, great common division of n and 2 minus k is uh, some number d and uh, uh, then uh, we do the phases by the rule uh, this rule it means that we uh, reflect the phase on the median then move it on the k distance k and then rotate uh, to be uh, over three, uh, just one rotation. And then, so this space moves to this space uh, as uh, written here. So after, uh, after all gluings, we get uh, singular manifolds. Uh, it, there, were, there will be one singular point. Uh, all the vertices of this uh, bipyramid glue to exactly one vertex. 
and the neighborhood of this uh, vertice would be some cone over uh, a compact orientable surface of genus G. I'm sorry. Yeah. Are the indices modular n? Yes, of course. So we we get a, a three dimension manifold with one singularity. If you just cut uh, the neighborhood of this point, we get a manifold is boundary. Uh, boundary would be the uh, surface of genus. So the roof of the is not correct here. Sorry? The roof of the is not correct here. You use quite different methods. They do not repeat. You cannot repeat your life. He explained them in words. Very clear. The A, B, C just edges. But this is an example for uh, oh, okay, okay. both okay. sides. Yes. Okay. And uh, what we uh, prove for such uh, manifolds? Uh, first, we prove that uh, we find uh, an upper and lower bounds for the complexity of such manifold. And uh, for the uh, case of when the, we have d equals to 1 or d equals to 2, we find the exact value of the complexity of such manifolds. And uh, so uh, let me just, at the end of the talk, uh, uh, give uh, an idea of how we prove this theorem, uh, theorem this one. Uh, and, uh, he used here to prove it uh, to write your invariance. The idea was as follows. Uh, first, uh, it was for d equals 1, uh, it was proved uh, exactly by, uh, it was proved by Paoluzzi Zimmerman, who suggested this construction that these uh, manifolds are hyperbolic manifolds. So, uh, it means that we uh, can, uh, we have, we have a, good, a, a good case that the complexity is uh, just a number of uh, minimal number of commutative values. So then uh, the upper bound uh, is uh, is very easy because we can uh, decompose the bipyramid B n into n uh, tetrahedra as a uh, slice of uh, f or orange just we have uh, n uh, n tri tri uh, n um, n tetrahedra so uh, if you consider uh, this triangulation and uh, in each tri tri uh, tetrahedra you have a butterfly so we construct a special spine with exactly n two vertices so the upper bound is uh, very easy it's equals to n but uh, let us prove that uh, uh, lower bound is uh, equals n2. Uh, on the contrary, suppose that uh, we have uh, a, minim a minimal scale which is different from uh, just constructed. And I do not write here. And uh, because of this nice relation, uh, uh, relation between the uh, vertices and these in the special spine which equals to all your characteristics of the manifold. Uh, we know that this spine uh, should has uh, one to uh, one disk and n, n minus one true vertices because I forget to say uh, that uh, constructed uh, manifolds uh, sorry, constructed manifolds has exactly two disk and uh, dual special spine. They have two disks and uh, if you have a spine with uh, less number of vertices, it should have less number of disks. So uh, we suppose that it has one disk. And then we use uh, F so-called epsilon variant introduced by uh, Matthias Sokolov and Darchinika, which is just a logically trivial part of order 5 to write your own variant. And let me just uh, simply uh, define it. If you consider uh, a special spine, and we consider the set of all simple some polyhedra of this spine, which means that we consider polyhedra uh, who has a very nice structure, just non singular point as pictured about the triple lines and uh, true vertices. So uh, we consider this set of some polyhedra 
and associate to each such a polyhedra its a epsilon weight by the formula uh, given here minus one power number of vertices, epsilon power uh, order characteristic of this polyhedra minus vertices number of vertices where epsilon just a uh, solution of uh, this equation. And then uh, the epsilon variant is just the sum over uh, over of overall simple separator of it of its weight. So uh, uh, if you calculate just let me show this if you calculate uh, an epsilon variant for for our spine uh, P and Q which is uh, dual to our triangulation each uh, each section of variant is uh, first one. No, I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost. What is T? What is uh, what? T. Ah, T. T, T means uh, the value of uh, that's just an epsilon variant. Mm -hmm. Because in the uh, initial paper, it first was called T invariant, and then it was uh, you know like epsilon variant. Okay. Uh, Why do you have two different formulas for the so epsilon variant? Remind that we have a, uh, we suppose that our spine first spine is not minimal, and we uh, suppose that we have a minimal spine P, and we calculate epsilon variant uh, in these two cases for the first spine for the second spine. And uh, but, but in the second line, you should uh, write a different manifold, not M and K. Yes. No, we uh, calculate this invariant from different spines of the same manifolds. We so it's not an invariant of the manifold, it's an invariant of the spine. No, it's invariant of the manifold. But, but calculated by, from the spine. What is the difference? But are the right hand sides in the first and the second line equal? Right. Uh, they, but it, they should be equal, but we see that uh, it, uh, for n greater than 3, it's uh, impossible to be equal, so uh, we get a contradiction and uh, the initial spine is the minimum. So the idea was we have we had a spine and uh, we suppose that it's not a minimum. I see. Then we calculate uh, yeah. epsilon variant for these two spines and see that uh, epsilon variant is different. And so Still, uh, this writing is misleading. Without uh, comments, it's uh, completely yeah. it's absurd. I understand, well, I understand your, your, your argument. Is, uh, so, suppose I have no. Okay, so uh, just finish that. Uh, thanks to Trevor <laughs> <laughs> Roy, which should help us to, uh, to find the complexity for infinite mechanism.
or from this uh, polydot we get what's called parameter tachydron, right? And is it worth looking on decomposition in parameter tachydra in your approach rather than the <coughs> truncated synthesis? But uh, we delete from the manifold the uh, hmm? We delete just from the manifold. No, I just mean that instead of looking, you decompose your manifold into find your complexity by looking at the number of those truncated uh, polytops into which you split your, your manifolds. But I don't understand what happens. Uh, what? It will be a boundary and what? You, you can't, you, you you can't see stages. stages. This, this yeah. one, right? Yes, yes, yes. Would it be a boundary or what? No, it will be yeah. some polytops, right? Yeah. So you, you just cut, uh, cut this edge by a fiber plane which separates the stage from the rest, right? Mm -hmm. So like you did with vertices. And you get some other. Uh, I mean, and I know that the decomposition into this point of features in many different sort of problems, like uh, maybe. I'm not a little bit answer. <laughs> okay. So I have no question, but a comment. This uh, notation for the same thing, T and epsilon, it arises T stands for to write. Because this is very just a homological tree part of uh, uh, the second order to write a variant. And epsilon stands for, states for, is for golden mean. Epsilon is equal to 1 minus square root of 5. Or uh, golden mean is usually denoted by 5. But I used uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This thanks thing is
Thank <laughs> you. 